What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of In Totality. I'm your host, Megan Ashley, and I'm so grateful that you are here joining me again with another episode. And um, Jay and Jordan are here. They're back here. You guys might hear them hey. somewhere. Um, but yeah, I'm excited you guys are joining me back. And this is going to be a special episode because I want to talk about what everybody is thinking about this week. I want to talk about what everyone has on their heart this week, and that's what? Love, a word that comes and goes, but do people really know what it means to really love somebody? That song was on my heart this morning, because I knew I was going to come on here and talk about love, and um, shout out to Kurt Franklin, because that's always a hit. Y'all know that song? Mm -mm. Can't say I do. Y'all don't know that song? I don't think I've heard Unless it. Unless I don't know the way you're singing. Okay. Don't, first of all, don't do me. <laughs> first off, let's not too much on my singing. I know this song. Um, Hold on. You're going to get copyright. I ain't going to play too much of it. Y'all remember this song? Yeah. I know the beginning, but I don't know the word. My mama used to play that song. What it really means to love. Yeah, I need to hear the choir. Okay. Jordan, first off, don't do me. Um, but yeah, I want to talk about love because it's Valentine's Day. I don't know when Valentine's Day falls, if it's before this podcast or on this podcast or whatever, but Valentine's Day was this week. And I want to talk about love. And I get this question often, and Jay, Jordan, and I talk about this. We've talked about it a few times. But, um, and the question that I get often is, are you going to date again? Are you going to, what's your dating life like? Do you want to get married again? Um, you know, who? what kind of guy are you looking for? All these questions. I get these questions often. Um, for those of you who don't know, I um, am recently divorced and, oh my gosh, it's coming up on a year. Isn't that crazy? Like a year. So much has happened in a year. It's like wild. Like literally in a month, it will be a year that I've officially been divorced. And it's not Please hear my heart. It's not anything that I'm celebrating, but um, it is something that it's just crazy that a whole year went by. Yeah, you went from 12, like, to now this is the start of your own. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So anyway, um, I, so I kind of want to just walk through what this is like for me. Um, again, I, you know... There are so many just basic things that we experience as humans. Um, but then when you start to try to align your life with the way that God wants you to live, so much of the way that you used to do, do things change. And um, it was interesting because uh, Jay Jordan and I were all out in my office and I had recently, you know, made a decision that I needed to really just focus fully on God, um, towards the end of last year and not, um, not really be in romantic relationships. I feel like, um, I, you know, and again, when I got divorced, I was trying to date. I wanted, okay. I just want to be clear too. <laughs> I was ready to have sex. Yes, I was ready to have sex. I was like, I'm going to have sex and God is just going to have to forgive me <laughs> because I have been married for 12 years. Um, the last few years of our marriage obviously were very, um, you know, uh, frustrating for the both of us, very, you know, toxic and, um, and, you know, we just were not in a good place. So clearly I wasn't having a sex life. 
Um, so when I filed for divorce and, you know, was going through all going through that process, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we talk about. I was ready to just be like, to be, you know, to be single. single. I was, yeah, I was ready to be single. And that's what single people do. But just like God would do in his <laughs> divine order, the second I, um, you know, moved out and moved into my new place, I, um, so much just changed. Like my life just radically changed and my commitment towards God radically changed. And um, not that it changed overnight immediately, like all my bad habits were done overnight, but um, God had really captured my heart in a real way. And I wanted to live my life for him fully. And that means that that changes how I date. It changes who I date. It changes when I date. And so one night, Jay and Jordan and I were all out um, in my office. And I don't know what we were doing, but I just remember I stopped. And I was like, yo, I don't know if I was laughing or what, but I was like, yo, it's wild. But I think I've really become one of those people that's like, I am I will never have sex again until I get married. Like, and that thought came to me and I was Low key, like it kind of freaked me out a little bit because I never, I have never made that up in my mind, like fully, like I am, you know, cause I'm, I'm grace, <laughs> grace. I'm like, God's grace. <laughs> okay. If, if I slip up his grace, he forgives. He is faithful to forgive. I really was like God's grace. Like, no, but the more I started living my life for God and reading his word more, the more conviction really was in my heart. Like I was convicted to do things that I wasn't convicted to do before. And it started to increase. It started in little ways, but then it started to increase more and more. And I think by the time that I blurted that out of my mouth, like it had fully like cemented in my heart, like oh my gosh, I am never going to have sex again until I get married. And I remember Jay was like, dude, he was like, bruh, same. And we all were just, Jordan too, we were all just talking about how that was like a real, do you guys remember us talking about that? Yes, you and Jay. I absolutely remember us talking about that. Did that hit you at the same time or did you already? It had hit me like a week before. Okay. That's how you know, y'all. This, this is really the hut over here. This is a hut, hut headquarters over here. We really be over here grinding it out and trying to live for God. But I remember when when I said it, it just was a random, like, I think, like, literally God was like, no. Like, I think I was thinking about it because I actually, I think I had the opportunity to do it coming up. And, like, I was thinking about, oh, my gosh, like, I can't do this. Like, I cannot, like, I really feel convicted about having sex before marriage where I didn't just months prior, I did not feel that convicted about it because God's grace, right? But I was like, oh my gosh, the more I'm learning about God's word, like the more I don't want to at any in any way cause there to be any type of separation between me and him. And I know that his word was clear about sex being for marriage, you know? And so- um, but when I said it out loud, it was like, Jay was like, who finally, like somebody else get it too. No, seriously, because I, I definitely felt alone in, in that moment. So to kind of have somebody uh, not only like confirm yeah. like what, what, what that conviction was, it was like, all right. Yeah. Do you feel like, oh, you guys can both tell me and you guys sound off in the comments below. Cause this is really about to be a conversation, but do you feel like, like, Okay, what what made that change for you, Jay? Because I know I know what happened with me, but like, what made that change for you that you were like, I'm not having sex until I get married? Uh, it was the the very clear conviction I had after the last time I had had sex. Mm. It, it, I mean, the pressure that I felt. Uh, oh like yeah, I remember the, the you saying that. Presence of the spirit, the way I can kind of parallel it to to let you know what that pressure feels like. It was as if an entire ocean. Like the pressure like that you would feel if you're at the bottom of the ocean is as if an entire ocean was in the room that we were in. Mm. It's like the strong presence of a third presence there. And I know it was God. Yeah. And, um, 
the shame that I felt, I was like, yeah, I can't do this again. Yeah. Not 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 for the sake of my own pleasure. Yeah. Not for the sake of the pleasure of this other person. No, no way. Yeah. I think for I think the thing that like came to my mind is when Jackie, um, Jackie had preached something. I don't know where I saw it at. I think I was watching on YouTube, but she had said something and was like, you know, when I gave my life to God, um, nothing really changed like on the outside. She said, but she had came to a realization that like God was always watching her. Like his omnipresence was real. And I think that feeling that you had, I experienced that shortly after in the sense of like, the the very present awareness that God was present. <laughs> like he like he's right there. And I and 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 thank God I wasn't do I wasn't having sex because I think I probably would have vomited <laughs> if that I was like wait you hold on no learn this stuff for the first time. No, I did I wasn't and I wasn't having sex at all. But I'm saying even even in the close intimacy that I was having, even that was like, God is here. God is watching. And I cared. And I cared. And I think that be the thing that really just that tripped me up was that like, I've always had a knowledge that God was omnipresent and like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I knew that. But like, I cared that he was there. I cared that. Like, if I believe that God is omnipresent, he's around, I actually care that he's in this room right now. And am I pleased and okay with what he's seeing? Is he pleased with what he's seeing? And it literally, what used to feel so safe to me, like close proximity of someone else, like cuddling and kissing and, you know, that type of intimacy that I, that I loved, it and, and that I felt, especially with, with this particular person, like I felt so safe with, and it wasn't that he wasn't a safe person. It was just, that wasn't safe for me anymore. Like, and I did, like, I was aware that God was there and I was aware that he cared about that. And I cared that he cared. And even though um, I'm not a hundred percent proud with all of my, my decisions or actions, I was, it was an indication that, that my heart was being changed, like that, I, cause I cared and it was on my mind. And, um, and yeah, I just had that like realization that I was like, wow, like what if I never get married again? Does that mean I'll never have sex again? And the answer is, yeah, that's what that means. Like, yeah. And every time it comes out of my mouth. I mean, like, it's just crazy. But it's but it's a thing, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, no, like, I'm not, I, I can't. And it also confirms what he says in his word that, you know, I'm doing a new thing in you. Yeah. And the ways of, of your of your past are, are, are dead. Yeah. It, it literally just kind of confirms those words. That, yeah. Because like, it kind of, it's bizarre to think about that something that I did so freely and had was so carefree about before I was getting so close to you. I'm actually not doing that. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. And, and how it feels different. Like even the thought of it, like I have a different response on the inside of me. Like, and it's like, you know, we human, so we have desires and things that, you know, like we're human beings. Um, so we're still going to, have to fight some of those fleshly desires but like yo the fact that my heart was in a position where it had made up its mind like my heart is submitted to God and there there's just no nothing like I and this is probably crazy because it's like here's a quick way to never get asked out on a date <laughs> Hi, I love Jesus. I'm never having sex until I get married but but it also sets a standard so like when people ask me, are you going to date again? Um, I would, I would love to, I would love to date again. I think, I think that would be cool. I've never really, um, been in the dating world because I got married so young. So dating and like being asked out on a date and going to dinner, like I, you know, I haven't done a whole bunch of that. I was, you know, experiencing that with one person, um, for a while, but now it's like, I, I don't even know what that would even look like. Um, but the other thing is that 
I don't have a desire. Like I have a desire to date and to get married again one day if God, if God would allow it, if it's his will, I would love that because I feel like I would do it so much better. I feel like I would be so much better. I would be a better wife. I would be, you know, a better helpmate. I would be a better um, Proverbs 31 woman. Like I feel like I would do it right. Um, but the that desire that I have doesn't outweigh my desire to serve God and to please him. And so that's the thing that is kind of pushing me and where my attention is. And so where I have all this opportunity to feel alone, to be, you know, like Valentine's Day. I don't have a Valentine's. Like my Valentine's is Jay Jordan, Eli, Caleb, and Jonah. Like those are the people that I spend my time. Those are my Valentine's. Like I love them and, you know, I'll probably do something special for Valentine's for them. But like, you know, I don't, there's so much opportunity to feel alone or to be like, oh, will I ever get married again? Or, you know, will I ever be able to have sex again? But those desires don't outweigh my desire to serve God and to do what he called me to do first. And, um, you know, this week, Valentine's Day has never been like a thing for me, but for some people it's hard. Some people it's hard to, to, go year after year and not have a date or not have a Valentine's or not ha, not have a, a a significant other that you can spend this, you know, special day with. Um, but I just, I don't know. I don't feel alone because I'm not alone, A. Um, but two, I think because my heart is positioned in a way that wants to please God so much that I, like, I don't, there's no room for loneliness or like, you know, feeling like, yeah, like I don't feel like I'm lacking anything. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. Jay. I don't feel like I'm lacking anything. I don't feel like I'm missing out on something. I don't like, I feel like I am right when I'm doing what God has called me to do and I'm being obedient to him. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. And I'm not missing out on anything. I'm right in the very position that I'm supposed to be. And and if that is a desire that I have, then I have to exercise patience and wait on the Lord, right? The Bible says, they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall walk and not faint. When you're waiting on God for something that you really desire, it doesn't mean that you wait and do nothing, but it means that you wait and, and you serve God in the ways that he called you to serve and you be obedient to God in the ways that he's called you to obey, and in that you're you're getting new strength you're you're he's strengthening you and building your endurance and building your your um your patience and so that's what i'm kind of learning right now in this season is that part of it um jordan how do you feel about that dating you're 20 jordan's 23 guys um and I don't know if this is ever a thing for you because this this isn't really a thing that you care about. But but you said the same thing too. You were like, yeah, like, mine's is just different because I never wanted to get married, but I've always wanted kids. Mm. So that was my sticker. It, it was like I have to get married, or <laughs> the the little babies that I want will never. Jordan be said the sex really wasn't the issue. I just wanted kids. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you didn't even have to have sex to have kids, but the fact that I have to be married is so that even even that changed your yeah, desire. Like, like, oh, okay, I, in order, to, I have a desire to have kids, but in order to have kids and do it the way that God called me to do it, I have to get married first. Because yeah. I was like younger and like a teenager, I, I was okay with being a single parent. Mm. Like, it was like, okay, I know I want kids, I can raise them on my own, but. How the Bible talks about it, the family unit, the family, yeah. it's like. And I think that that's the thing. It's like we, I don't think that you're alone in feeling like that. I think there are a lot of women that are like, I don't even got to have a man. I just want my kid. There's so many there. And there's a lot of successful women that I have seen that, you know, go the route of adoption. And I think adoption is beautiful. But I think that, again, we have to like have a heart and have a heart that is willing to do it God's way first 
like your heart, like even though you might have a desire to have kids before you, more than you have a desire to be married, but when you're following God and you're following Christ and you're following his word, then that means that you have to, like Jay said, become new, be transformed into having desires that God has, like wanting what he wants. That's how I was like, um, I was kind of convicted because when I have a conversation with God, I'm like, okay, so I have to be married to have kids. And I was like, mm, if I really just want kids, I can't adopt. But then I was like, so you being prideful now. Mm. And now you feel like you can get around. Like go God's around, yeah. And still do it the right way. And it's like, he knows your heart. And he knows that you want kids that look like you that come out of your body. So the fact that you're going to actually go to the route of adoption just to avoid obeying him yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. I just think that when you... It's just interesting. And I love like when we are all together to talk about it because we all get to the same conclusion, but by different ways of experiences. And I just think that that's the beauty of God. Like that's how, you know, God is really working and he's the same God that works when like we're all serving the same God because we all came to the same conclusion without talking to each other. Like I had this thought completely on my own and blurted it out loud. Jay was thinking about it a week before Jordan had come to the conclusion around the same like God was working in all of us simultaneously in different ways but we came to the same conclusion and so I just want to give a quick little like example of something that God showed me in the in when it comes to being patient and waiting and you know wanting to have sex and not being married you got to be patient because you got to be married right so you got to be patient it went to find the right person or for the right person to come into your life. For Jordan, it's like she wants kids, but she needs to be patient. She has to be married first, which means she, the right guy, she has to date a guy first. And there's processes, <laughs> right? And so um, I just want to tell you guys about a time that God really like, and, and I pray that they, this encourages you if you feel like you're waiting, like I've been single for this amount of time and I just, I'm, I've been waiting to, you know, be in a relationship and I just feel like God isn't hear me and all this stuff. So I'm going to tell you about this time that back when I lived in Ohio and I was a stay at home mom and um, my boys were probably, I want to say Eli was around five, maybe, which means Caleb was what? two Jonah was around one uh, maybe so they were all little all under five and um when I became a stay-at-home mom it was extremely important to me to have a schedule and a routine that was something that like I had to have I needed structure because being a stay-at-home mom there's all this opportunity for you to lose your mind if you do not have a schedule and um so anyway, I, I had kind of trained the boys. Uh, I've been a stay-at-home mom for a little bit, and I had kind of trained the boys that they were not allowed. They were all sleeping in the same room. They had like these little bunk bag things. They were all sleeping in the same room, but I had instructed them that they were not allowed to leave the room before without us coming to get them. And the reason being is because my youngest son, Caleb, would wander and get into things. And he, um, you know, we, we were very cautious about him walking down the steps and just doing things. And so I just made a rule for all of them. Like you cannot come out of the room in the mornings until mommy or daddy comes and gets you. Right. So, you know, I've worked with them with that and they adapted that practice. And my morning routine would usually be to get up before them and get their breakfast ready because it makes the day go by easier when you just have everything ready for them and then get them up and do it. So um, so one day I'm up and I'm, I'm in the kitchen and I'm, you know, getting cleaning up and putting, you know, the breakfast together and, um, I'm almost done and I hear, um, Caleb kind of whining. So I hear Caleb kind of whining above me and I'm like, oh, okay, they're starting to wake up. Um, and then Caleb starts crying, right? He's irritated now. So he starts crying and then, um, it was like the snowball effect. Then all of a sudden Jonah starts crying and then, and then I hear Eli's voice, mommy, mommy, mommy. And he's just screaming my name. Um, and so I'm kind of chuckling to myself cause I'm like, they are so dramatic. <laughs> like relax. I'll be up in a second. Y'all literally just opened your eyes. Um, and so so I hear Eli and he's pretty persistent. Mommy, where are you? Mom, mom. He's just calling me, calling me. So I'm laughing to myself and um, 
And I kind of waited because I wanted to see. I'm like, hmm, I want to see if they come out of their room. So I waited for a little bit at the bottom of the steps. And um, I'm hearing that they're up now. I can hear their, you know, them moving around in the room. And it's starting to get like, all right, they're getting lit. It's like, they're, it's like go up there and get them before somebody loses an arm or an eye or something. So I go up the steps and um, I open the door and Eli is like, you know, he has tears in his eyes and Caleb had tears in his eyes and John had tears. And I'm just like, Lord, like everyone, are y'all okay? And Eli's like, where were you? I thought I called for you. Where were you? I kept calling you. Where were you? I thought you left me. And I'm like, Eli, first of all, now mind you guys, I, I want to be clear. This did not last, but for literally like five minutes or less. This was not like 30 minutes. Like this was literally like under five minutes that this the, this chaos was happening. Um, and and I, I get down and hug Eli. I'm like, buddy, it's okay. I was just downstairs making breakfast. And so I'm walking them downstairs and God starts speaking to me and showing me me, right? So I walk downstairs and they sit down at the table and they ate. And so- they're eating and I'm kind of going through what just happened in my head and okay, God, where are you showing me? Like, what, what is this? And he showed me how I usually respond to him when I'm impatient, when I feel like I don't hear him respond to me, when I feel like he's left me, when I know that he's given me an instruction, but his presence isn't here. And so I'm starting to feel scared right? And just as I told my son, buddy, I was here the whole time, but I was downstairs preparing something for you. So all you had to do was come to the table and eat, but you had to be patient. And God was showing me the same thing that when we're, that sometimes in the waiting season of the things that we really desire, if we trust God, then we just have to trust that he's going to do it in his timing. And knowing that waiting and exercising patience is never a waste of time. And he is preparing something for us. And that the lack of his, of what we perceive as like his presence isn't there with us or the lack of his presence. Really, same with Eli. Like Eli didn't hear me respond to him. So he thought I wasn't there, but I was there the entire time. And I'm telling you, God's there. He's, he's, he's with you the entire time. Be patient. Be patient and wait and don't just wait and just sit there and do nothing. Wait and serve, wait and, and obey, wait and, and lean into God and, and know his word more, know his character more, know his nature more, know his word inside and out. You have so much opportunity in the waiting. I've learned that in my waiting season and I'm waiting on God for a few things, Right. But I'm learning this time that I have with him is so beautiful because I get to cultivate a more intimate relationship that I'm not just sitting here waiting for nothing, that he's preparing something for me, specifically for me. And he's, and he's getting it ready for, for me, just like I was getting breakfast ready for my children. And that when the door opens, when I open the door for them, all they had to do was walk downstairs and eat. And I believe the same thing. I believe that God, he, even when, our, when we're waiting and we don't feel his presence and we don't hear him respond and all of those things, it can offer such a great opportunity for you to be discouraged, but don't be discouraged. Be encouraged that he is a God that is near. He's near to the brokenhearted. He's near and preparing something for you, spe specifically for you, something special for you. Trust in, trust in him, trust in his timing because he's never failed. And, and learn to have a heart that is okay with whatever he says and whatever he declares for your life. Don't allow the enemy to manipulate you and to cause you to be offended with God because he's, he's trying to produce some patience in you. He's trying to produce some perseverance in you, some long suffering in you. That's okay because those are the characteristics of God and we want to take on his nature. So if you're single 
and this week is hard for you, I pray that this encourages you. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay that you may not have a date. That's totally fine. If, as long as you're doing what God has called you to do, he has something amazing waiting for you, specifically for you. He's preparing it himself. And so, um, yeah, I just want to encourage you. You're not alone because Jay Jordan and I, we over here thugging it out too. Like we really over here thugging it out, submitting our lives to God and not, you know, crumbling under the the influence of our hearts wanting to be comforted by other things outside of God. Um, so, so yeah, I pray that this encourages you. And another thing I just kind of really just got is in the same moments that we don't we don't detect God's presence. He's there. And that's what you learn from the knowledge and depositing his yep, word. Yep. You're become aware that even though I can't detect you, because again, I'm human and you're a God. So yep. you can decide whether I detect you here or not. Mm -hmm. You get to be everywhere. You are yep. right there. But if you don't know that, or when you learn to know that more and you deposit that in you, mm -hmm. that's where your faith is activated. Yep. And to know that you will show up and I will detect you when the time is right because yep. you know when the time is right. Yeah. Yeah, that I think that that's really good. It's having the faith even when you can't feel it or see it. And you only have that when you know his word. Like you really, that's what strengthens your faith. And that's what allows you to be convicted. Yeah. Because when you're convicted, that's you knowing that he's there. Yep. You detect him. You're, yep, yep. Because you because you have the knowledge that he's there. Like you, you've learned. He's always around. He sees me inside and out. Like, it's not like he's just omnipresent outwardly. He's omnipresent inwardly. He sees all through your heart, all through your mind. He's with you. The Bible says faith comes by hearing the word of God. Not faith comes by when everything happens the way you want it to happen. Faith comes by the word of God. And so having faith increases and produces that, that patience in you and that perseverance. And, and that's what, that's the nature that God wants us to have. And so it, I know that it seems wild. Like I get it. Like how 19, um, I don't know, <laughs> early 1900s of you to be such a modest woman who doesn't want to have sex until they're married. But I believe that that is the way that's God's divine order. Yeah, we were never supposed to change. Yeah. And I, and I think if you've experienced sex before that, you know, after having that knowledge of being aware, like that's how it should be. I think that's what makes that fight a little bit harder or makes yeah. that desire a different fight for somebody that isn't, wasn't as active or maybe not active at all. Yeah. You know, your fight is different. Yeah. Your fight is different. And like, again, also just seeing yourself as like, a vessel and a temple of the Holy Spirit. Like this body isn't just the, I, I don't get to just do whatever I want with this body. And I think that that's, that goes a step further. Like when you really decide that like, like Christ, you want Christ to inhabit all of you, like in become a new creature, right? Like this is no longer up for just my decision. Like I literally go to God before I do decide whatever I feel like I want to do with this body. You know what I mean? And I think that that is such a far off thing for where we are in society. But for those of you who want to have healthy relationships, you want to have a healthy boyfriend or girlfriend, you want to have a healthy marriage, you want to have um, a positive, more fulfilling experience when it comes to sex. I feel like you're only going to get that when you're in a marriage that is grounded in God. I re I really do. And I have and uh, not not that I'm not talking from experience. I've experienced things. <laughs> I've done some things, okay? And I I've done it the wrong way right? I've done it the wrong way several times. And so I'm really excited. Like I was talking to Ashley about it. I think I told you guys about this when I was talking to Ashley on the phone and she was like, so you're really not going to have sex again until you get married. And I was like, I really am going to do that. Like I really am going to, you know, wait 
and do it the way in God's divine order because I love God so much and I want to do it his way in every way of my life. Like, I think that we want these promises from God, but aren't willing to adhere to like the way to get those promises, you know, or we want his promises more than we want his presence. And a, a really, really good example of that, um, just because it just came to my head, but I think this is, um, this is in Exodus, I want to say. And this is where Moses is, they're in the wilderness and God basically is kind of fed up with the people. And he's like, fine, I'll give you, you know, I'll bring you to the land or, t or you guys can go to the land and, you know, where everything will be better than what it is now. And Moses is having this conversation with God and he, and Moses says like, if your presence isn't going to be there, don't take us to that place. And I think that that is, that's the heart that we have to have, even when it comes to love, even when it comes to relationships, when it comes to sex, God, if your presence isn't there, I don't want to be there. Yes, sex is good, but your presence is better. Yes, a relationship would be nice, but your presence is better. Yes, going on dates would be great, but your presence is better. And I think that's, that is just, I know for us, the three of us in here, that's where our heart is. It's like, God, we want your presence more than I want anything else. More than your promises, I want your presence. And um, and having that desire, it naturally lends itself to having God's promise. And then he was kind enough to make his will known in his word. So it's like, yeah. I'm aware of what your will is. Your will is better than mine. Yeah, always. 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 His, like, your, his way is always better than ours. Every time. And I think that there comes... You know, for some people, for those of you who have been able to make that decision without any drastic things happening in your life, God bless you. But I know for me, some tragic things had to happen in my life to get to that point. And I pray that I can encourage you to make that decision before something tragic has to happen in your life to get you to that place of desperation. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to say regarding that, like, I know that this is love week and it might be hard and, you know, but I pray that that encourages you and know that God above anything, God loves you deeply. And that love is priceless. And that's the same love that promoted or prompted, I'm sorry, not promoted, but prompted God to send his son to die on the cross for you. That love, the Bible says in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world, not that he just loved us, but he so loves us like deeply and intimately. And I pray that that fills your heart this week, even if in the absence of a, a significant other or a date or a romantic getaway or vacation or any of that stuff. I pray that you know that God so loves you and that his, his presence is enough. It's fulfilling. It literally, it, it is, it's enough. And, um, and yeah, that's it. So I'm going to get to a question from my Patreon community. If you are not, um, on my Patreon, please go join. Uh, the link is, will be in the description below. Um, this Patreon community is amazing. Also, before I get into this question, I want to show you guys something. I have an Amazon storefront. I get so many people that ask me, what Bible do I read? What devotional do I read? What books do I read? Um, even the highlighters that I use for my books and Bibles. So all Bible study material things are going to be on my Amazon storefront. The link will be in the description. You can find Bibles like this. This is the Bible study Bible that I use. I love this Bible. It's an ESV study Bible. It gives you so you guys want to know what I found last night in this Bible. I didn't even know. It tells you as articles and resources, God's plan of salvation. Like it breaks all this stuff down. Um, what the Bible says sin is salvation. Like it really helps. Like it is so like helpful to if you're looking for like specific things right um yeah like how to have joy a lot of expansion outside of just books and verses yeah it's it, it talks to you about other religions so that you can learn kind of how to contend for the faith um and defend your faith um eastern um orthodoxy like all this type of stuff it's so cool 
uh, so this is my ESV study Bible. Um, ESV stands for English Standard Version. Um, this is the Bible that if you see me walking around, call me Missionary Meg. That's what this what this Bible is. Um, and then to go along with my Bible, I have the Tony Evans study. Or I'm sorry, the Tony Evans Bible Commentary. I love this. It actually has a study Bible that is in my Amazon storefront too. But this is not the Bible. This is the commentary of the Bible. So when you open it, it's not going to tell you the scriptures. It's going to give Tony Evans description or um, commentary on the scriptures to give more context. Um, Tony Evans is amazing, brilliant. Um, I trust his his theology and I trust his um, his commentary on God's word. He's, I think he's the only black person who has a commentary Bible. Also, um, I, look, look, all the books that I read are on here. Crazy love. Don't mind the wax that's on this book. Um, crazy love is a book that we're going to read with my Patreon community. Um, beta Satan. If you don't have this book, I, I don't know what you're doing. This is one of the greatest books ever. Um, my Patreon community has read this book. We went through it together and this book is amazing. The next book that we're going to get into is Driven by Eternity. Um, and that's also by John Brevere. This book is on my Amazon storefront. Um, Jackie Perry's Upon Awakening. This devotional was amazing. A 60 day devotional. We were so sad when it was over. Um, this is a 60 day devotional. It was amazing. Make sure you get that. Um, so yeah, these are all my books. I have my, the devotional that we're reading currently is New Morning Mercies. And that's on my Amazon storefront as well. And so if you're part of my Patreon community, we, we go through these materials together. Um, so if you haven't gotten your materials or Bible, if you need some Bible study materials, just things that help encourage your faith, that's on there. It'll be in the description link below. Okay. All right. So let me get into a question. I just wanted to share that with you guys really quick. Let me put this here. Um, so since we were already talking about love, I'll answer this question. Are you single? Are you interested in marriage? And are you interested in having more kids if God wills? The question is, or the answer is, I am single. I, does it feel weird? Let's like, don't put the Bible on the floor, right? I just... <laughs> Yeah, you, you said it is like that nowadays. Yeah, that's disrespectful. It's like all these other stuff can go on the floor, but the Bible, the word of God cannot go on the floor. Absolutely. Pick that up. Pick that up. Are you crazy? I put my purse on the ground before I put a Bible on the ground. Um, so am I am I single? Yes, I am single. Um, I would love to get married again. Like I said, I feel like I would just do it better. I would love to get married again if God wills. Um, I would even have an, another children, another children, another child or children. I don't know. Children part might be pushing it, but <laughs> but you said that's what that's slicing. slicing it. Yeah, more than one would be slicing for sure. Like my kids are getting taller than me, so it's like. To start all over again would be insane, but um, I would, I would love to have, I would love to have um, a healthy relationship, a healthy, godly relationship. Um, but again, I know all the mistakes that I've made in relationships, platonic and, and romantic. Um, and so at this point in my life, I just want to really you know, give my full attention to God so that he can really perfect his love in me so that I can be all that he's called me to be. Um, and that I can show up and be my best self and who he called me to be in those relationships. So, um, yeah, I'm praying that God bring an amazing, you know, man in my life that I can have a relationship that is a reflection of his love and that it, promotes his love and promotes, um, living for him. And I, same in friendships, I want friendships that do the same thing. And so I am just patiently waiting for God to bring all of those things into my life. And until he does, I'll just continue to serve him as he shows me how. Um, and that's, yeah, that's where, where I'm at with it. I'm, I'm blessed that I have children now and they're fulfilling and they obviously take up a lot of time. And so I'm blessed that I've, I've, experienced, you know, being married before. And I just pray that I have the opportunity to do it in a better way. So, so yeah.
that's it. I pray that you guys feel loved. I pray that you know that you're loved. I pray that that this this you know Valentine's Day week wasn't hard for you. I pray that you know you have great friends around. And if you are in relationships, I pray that they're healthy and that they're rooted in God's word and rooted in his love and that you're feeling that and being fulfilled by that. So um, thanks for joining me on another episode. I am so thankful that you guys come back week after week. Um, I love you. Make sure you join my Patreon because that's where all the good stuff is at. Um, it's like if I ever dated again, that would be on Patreon. If I ever dated again, oh, it would be on Patreon. I would Patreon would be the only people that would know first outside of y'all, but yeah. it's like I would not <laughs> emoji over the face. Okay. You don't know this well, person. <laughs> You'd say I'm not going to date or get married until I'm old and retired. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I curse that word. Mm -mm. That's what Jordan was. Jordan wants me to be old and about to die. She was like, you can date five minutes before you die. It's like, no. Jay, Jay too? What about you? It, that's the thing. She's going to be the first one to fall in love. And we're going to be sitting over here looking at her like, watch, watch. God has a funny sense of humor. Watch. We will laugh about it. That doesn't, he does though. Just because you don't find it funny doesn't mean he might not find it funny. But what were you about to say, Jet? You were about to say that? Oh. Anyway, um, I pray that I am young and vibrant <laughs> by the time God brings somebody in my life. Not old and retired like Jordan said. What is retired? Am I ever going to retire? Probably not. Um, but yeah, anyway, I pray you guys feel loved and pray, pray for your future, you know, spouse or significant other, um, pray for your relationship. If you're in a relationship now, pray for that person and pray that you'll, you know, your, your union and relationship together is a reflection of, of God's love. So anyway, I love you guys. I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me for another episode.